Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. This is our first video of 2020. Hope everyone had a happy new year. In this video, we're going to take a look at three different emulators running on the RG350, including the Commodore emulator, which runs several different machines, the ZX Spectrum, as well as the Atari Lynx. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll go to the wagnerstechtalk.com RG350 tips page. And from there, you'll find a whole bunch of information on the RG350. So be sure and click around and explore. Lots of good information for you. In this case, we're going to check out the Commodore emulator, or VICE. And this particular emulator supports a number of popular Commodore machines, including the Commodore 64, the PET, and the VIC-20. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to click here to download the VICE OPK. So you want to right click the file and click Save As. Special thanks to Jetly, who is hosting all of these files. Thank you, Jetly. All right, so now we're going to just save the OPK file into our temp folder on our PC. And now we're going to go ahead and power on the RG350. So we'll hold the power button down for a little bit. And then I'm going to switch over to the Settings tab. And we'll plug our USB Type-C cable into the right USB port on the RG350. Don't plug it into the left, or this will not work. I do have a full tutorial on how to do this, so I'll put a link up above if you are unfamiliar with how to set up the network here. From there, we're just going to browse directly to our SD card. So we're at the root of the SD card, and now we're going to create an apps folder. So we'll just type in APPS. And within the apps folder, we want to drop our OPK files. So we're going to copy our vice OPK. And now if you have any ROMs that need installing, you can copy those to your ROM subfolder. And now we will go ahead and exit. So now we'll hit the right trigger button up here and move on over to emulators and down below we'll see all our emulators and vice is the one we're interested in now and to take a quick look here at all the emulators that are supported you see the Commodore 64 VIC-20 we'll go ahead and just hit start to go ahead and launch the Commodore 64 emulator and voila there it is We'll hit select, and let's load up a cartridge. So we'll just go in here, be sure and hit these double dots and go to the root, and go to media, SD card, and the location of your ROMs in this case. I have it in ROM C64. To be able to play this game, we need to hit the select key to start it. And now we'll hit select one more time. And we're going to move down to the machine settings, joystick settings, press A here and select Keyset 1. When you do that, you'll be able to use the D-pad. Now, to start the game, we're going to hit the virtual keyboard, and then we're going to move up to F1 and press A again, and that'll start the game. Press select, and the virtual keyboard will go away. And let's play some Donkey Kong. The colors are a little washed out here, but it does look fairly decent on the display. I'll bring it in a little bit closer so you can take a better look at it. And I was not very good at this game <laughs> on the Commodore 64, so I didn't get very far on this level. So we'll go ahead and play just a few more seconds here, and then we'll move on to another game. I 
There we go. All right, to exit the game, you want to hit the select button and press A. And now we'll go back into Vice and we'll try another game. On this one, I had to hit a space to start it. And this is none other than Tapper. So let's pass these root beers over to these thirsty folks and see if we can't clear the level. Woohoo! Nice. <laughs> All right, just to show you a few other machines here, let's load up the pet. This is actually one of the first computers I was ever exposed to back in school, in elementary school. Uh, I think it's pretty neat to be able to run it here on the RG350. We'll take a look at the VIC-20. Neat. And the Commodore 128. Very cool. Alright, so now let's take a look at the useful vice tips on the page. There's a few things you want to know, such as how to load up the virtual keyboard, and if you have problems with the controls, this will give you some tips. I did run into the sound not working, and how to exit the emulator. So, all of those tips are on the page if you need a refresher. Now let's move on to the ZX Spectrum, or Unreal Specky emulator. This will allow you to run the ZX Spectrum, on your RG350. So first we're gonna right click here and go again to Jetly's website and download the Unreal Specky Portable OPK to our temp folder on our PC and then from there if there's any ROMs you need to copy you can do that. Uh, I recommend putting creating a ZX folder and now we're going to copy the OPK file to our micro SD card and we'll launch Unreal Specky and ZX and let's load up Donkey Kong again. It's kind of fun to compare from the Commodore 64 to the ZX Spectrum. Under the joystick selection I use the Kempston joystick. It just seemed to work fine for me. You could probably use any one of them. So we're gonna hit the start button, Kempston joystick, and then press space. And then press start again to hide the virtual keyboard. And now we're playing Donkey Kong on the ZX Spectrum. Pretty cool. And again, I wasn't very good at this one either, but hey, it's neat. <laughs> All right, so let's load up Pac-Man. All right, first we're going to hit select, and we're going to select the Kempston, which it is. So then we'll hit start, and we'll move over to S to start the game. And now we're playing Pac-Man. This actually looks pretty good. I was fairly impressed. The movement is a little blocky. You don't see any sprites here, but it's pretty neat, though. The game plays well. All right, so let's take a quick look at some of the tips, such as hitting the select button to go into the configuration menu, a little bit of information on the joysticks, primarily the Kempston joystick and so forth, how to exit the emulator, and a few other things that'll be useful. Now let's move on to the Lynx emulator, or Handy 320. We're going to, again, download the OPK. Now keep in mind you could pop out the micro SD card and copy these files directly there if you want, but this just seems easier for me. So now we'll paste the OPK, just like we did with the others. And this particular emulator requires the linksboot.img file, which you'll have to search for that. And once you get it, you want to 
paste it somewhere on your micro SD where you'll remember it. So I'm just going to copy it to the root. Okay, now from there, we'll go ahead and launch the handy 320 emulator. And we'll just pick a game, doesn't matter which game it is, and you'll see this. Well, you get that error because we don't have the image file or the BIOS file copied. So we're going to hit start, go over to applications, Dingix commander, and it will have created a .handy subfolder since we launched it once. And we'll go to the root of our micro SD card and we'll select the file and hit X and then copy and then Y and quit. And there we go. So now we should be able to launch a game through the handy emulator. Hydra. <laughs> So I'm just pressing A through here to start the game. And holding down in the left and right. And I'm not very good at this game. As you can see. <laughs> Alright, so let's try another game. Joust. One of my favorites. I didn't say I was good at it. Just one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, I can't get out of here. I'm stuck. Uh, all right. So we're going to fly up to the top here and get out. That's embarrassing. All right. Let's try it again. There we go. Almost. All right, I could play this all day. I guess I better stop, huh? All right, let's try one more game on the Atari Lynx. We'll go ahead and exit out of here. Uh-oh. What could this be? <laughs> Lemmings. This is a pretty fun implementation. All right, so let's go. Okay, so I'll move over to the right here, and then I'm going to hit the little right bumper button up here, and you can see different, I guess, skins, you would call it, for the handy emulator. That's kind of neat. I'll put it back on full screen so it's easier to see. And you'll want to hit the B button to select what the character can do. So in this case, we want them digging a hole, so we'll select that one. And then we'll put the cursor over one of these guys and get him to start digging. And in the interest of time, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. So you don't have to sit here and watch all these little guys moving. And then they go into the exit area. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> all right, again. There's some more tips down here on the Atari Lynx, such as setting scan lines, the frames per second, how to swap the A and B buttons, and so forth. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative. If you want to let me know you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, we shall see you very soon.